Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and today we're going to create a scrollable image map in App Inventor. It's going to be very simple, but has a lot of room for creativity and improvement. About 15 to 20 years ago, it was really popular in web design to use image maps. Using a little JavaScript, a web designer could take any image and create clickable points on that image. It had a lot of creative uses back in the day, but it's not very relevant by today's standards. We're going to take that same concept and apply it to something fun you can do in App Inventor. Open up Photoshop or whatever image software that you're using and create a map however you want it to look. You'll be able to use my resources for practice if you've downloaded the tutorial app from the App Inventor gallery. Notice that the image size is 1304 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall. The screen size is going to vary depending on the user's phone, so the user will only be able to see a portion of this map at any given time. At first glance, this looks like one image. If you look closer, you'll notice the image is broken up into layers. Layer 1 is the background of the town, and layers 2, 3, and 4 are images of the buildings in the town. When we recreate this image in App Inventor, we want our buildings to appear in the exact same location that they appear in Photoshop. To do that, we need to capture the X and Y coordinate of the top left corner of each building. This is a little difficult to do with your eyes since the buildings aren't a perfect square shape. So I'm going to create a layer behind the buildings filled with a solid color. I can then move this shape around so that it's aligned perfectly to the top of the building and the left side of the building. If you're using Photoshop, select the info window. Position your cursor in the top right of the shape you created. Make sure your cursor position is as accurate as possible. You notice the info window changes X and Y coordinates based on the position of your cursor. The top left corner of this building is set to X equals 174 and Y equals 136. I'm going to jot this information down in Notepad and move on to the second and third buildings. Notice that I'm not transforming layer 6 to the exact size of each building. I'm just making sure I can visually see the top left corner of the building. Once I have the X and Y coordinate, I jot it down in Notepad. The next step is to save each of these layers as separate images. Hide all of the buildings and save layer 1 as background map. I prefer PNG images, but you could optionally save this background as a JPEG because it's a completely opaque image. For the buildings, select the layer, press Ctrl A to select all, press Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl N to open a new document with the exact image dimensions, select create to open the document, then press Ctrl V to paste. I'm going to save this building as button bank with a PNG extension. The buildings must be a PNG in order to keep the transparent background. So if you've downloaded this project from the gallery and you're using my resources to follow along in the video, you should have four images and you should have the X and Y coordinates for each of the buildings. The last thing we need to do is grab the color of the sky. Notice that the sky is actually a gradient fill, so I'm going to take the color picker and select the color that is at the very top of this image. There are a lot of different values that appear when I do this. The hexadecimal value is usually used in web design, but we're looking for the RGB value. I'm going to jot those numbers down in Notepad and save them for later. Now that we've saved our images and grabbed the information we need for each image, we can upload those images to our project in App Inventor and start working on the design. The first thing we're going to do is set the alignment of the screen. I know that my map is 400 pixels in height, but I don't know what phone the user has. Phones have different sizes, and as a result, the viewing screen on the phones will have different resolutions. I want the road to appear at the bottom of the screen, just like it does in Photoshop. So I'm going to set the vertical alignment of the screen to bottom. This will push all of my components towards the bottom of the screen, leaving excess room at the top. We grabbed the RGB values of the sky so we could fill in any extra vertical space if the screen is longer than the height of our background image. This will create the illusion of the map filling the entire screen without distorting the original image size. For now, set the background color of the screen to black so you can see the difference. This color will change in just a moment. I'm going to design from the bottom up so you can see how this is accomplished. Grab a horizontal scroll arrangement and name it bottom. Keep the alignment at left top and set the width to fill parent and the height to 400. Drop a canvas inside this horizontal scroll arrangement, name it map, and set the width and height of the canvas to be the exact width and height of your image map. Change the background color of the canvas to none. Do not add a background image to the canvas. In order to see the entire background, we need to turn it into an image sprite. 
name this image map, add the background map image as the picture, and then set its X and Y properties to 0, 0, so that it's perfectly aligned in the top left corner of the canvas. If you run the app, you can see that you can horizontally scroll to see the rest of the map on the right side of the screen. Pretty neat, but we're not done yet. Notice that the map is placed at the bottom of the screen, which is exactly where we want it, but we need to fix this portion above the map to look like the rest of the sky. This is actually pretty simple. Grab a vertical arrangement, name it top, and set both alignments to center center. Keep the height at automatic, but change the width to fill parent. Then set the background color to none. Inside the vertical arrangement, I'm gonna add a test label that will be replaced with a graphic for the final version. The test label will just let us see what we're clicking on so it doesn't need to look too fancy. Next, add three image sprites to the canvas. These image sprites are gonna act like buttons, so I'm gonna name them button bank, button work, and button store. Add the corresponding image for each button, then change the X and Y properties for each image sprite to the coordinates you wrote down earlier in your notepad. So button bank should be set to X equals 174 and Y equals 136. When you set the X and Y coordinates of the other two buildings, they should appear outside of the viewing window. That is to say you should not see them on your screen. They haven't disappeared, they're just not visible. Now that we've finished the design, we can move on to the block section. First, let's make sure the top section reflects the same color as the sky. Create a procedure named Initialize Screen. Grab a block that sets the background color of screen one and a custom color block. In this custom block, we're going to add the RGB values that we noted earlier from Photoshop. As a side note, you could add a fourth argument to this custom color that would change the opacity of the color, but we need this to be a solid color that matches the color of the sky, so we need to keep this color block with only three values. Finish the procedure by setting the height of the vertical arrangement named top to be the height of the screen minus the height of the bottom section where the canvas is stored. This will make sure that the top section is the exact height it needs to be in order to fill the remaining space on the screen. Call this procedure when the screen starts. Next, grab the touched events for each of the three building buttons. We're going to output to our test label each time we click on one of these sprites. Write something simple like you clicked on the bank and then run the app. Notice that in design view, the top arrangement is black, but when we run the app, the top matches the color of the sky. Scroll horizontally and make sure all three buildings appear. Click on each of the buildings and you'll notice that the test label changes to show which building you've clicked on. Ideally though, you want these image sprites to act like buttons. So let's say you were making a game and this is the map of the town in your game. When the user clicks on the bank, this should open up the bank screen, or whatever you want it to do. Maybe it just gives the user 100 gold every hour or something. To clean this up, I'm going to get rid of the test label and insert a pretty graphic. Maybe for your app, the top section could be a horizontal toggle menu. You could definitely get really creative with it and make it fun and interactive for your users. To wrap things up, let's talk a little bit about functionality. Always keep in mind that your project in App Inventor has a max file size. So doing something like this for every single screen is not ideal because these images can get really large and take up the entire allotted space for your project. You could optionally compress your photos, but keep in mind that your image quality may suffer as a result. If you're going for something visually stunning, that might not always be the best option. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye.